Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to you from wherever you are joining us today. Thank you very much for choosing to spend your time learning more about UWC SEA and in particular our East Campus Middle School. We will get underway in just a few minutes. We're going to let our audience members um, a little more time, give them a little bit more time to join this webinar. Thank you to those of you who have been very prompt to join us. Um, even slightly before noon Singapore time. Uh, so we're just going to give people a chance to join this webinar successfully and then we will get underway. So while you wait, and we thank you for your patience, we're going to invite you to enjoy a short video which shows you what a day in the life of middle school looks like on our East Campus. So Anne-Marie, if you could play that video, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. So um, welcome everyone once again, and thank you for your patience to those of you who joined us right away. Um, I know we will have some more people joining us in the first few minutes of the um, session, but I think we will get going with um, some introductions and an overview of today's program. My name is Malika Ramdas. I'm Director of Admissions at the college, and I have the pleasure of working across both our campuses. And today we focus on our East Campus Middle School. So after um, my introduction and just a few guidelines about the program, we will get underway with the middle school presentation about the, lead, about the learning program, and that will be led by our East Campus Middle School Learning Leadership Team. We will then have um, an opportunity for you to ask your questions. And um, at that point, very excitingly, our um, vice principals and our principal will be joined by some of our middle school students. Um, current middle school students, as well as a few students who went through our middle school and are now in our high school. Uh, and I think you'll really enjoy hearing from them. And they're going to be part of the interview panel responding to your questions. We will then have um, take you into a, a virtual tour of our East Campus Middle School. And we will invite you to give us a little bit of feedback about today's session. And then the final part of our program will be the question and answer session related to admissions. So all of your admissions questions are very welcome in that final part of the program. So that's what today looks like. Um, just a few guidelines. Um, we are recording this webinar. So the presentation part of the program will be recorded and we will then be sending you a link to the recording for anyone who signed up to attend today's program. And it will also be posted on our admissions website in a few days time. So if you do have friends who were not able to attend today's session, please pass that along to them. And you can always review the information by watching that recording. Now we are conducting today's session on um, a webinar platform. So at the bottom of your screen, you can locate a little button called Q&A, and we invite you to submit any questions that you have that are either related to the learning program and the middle school experience, or any questions that you have related to admissions. Um, we invite you to submit those through that question and answer button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You're welcome to do that at any time. 
during the presentation or during the actual question and answer period for each part of the program. Okay, so with that, I'm going to just kick us off by inviting you to give us um, a very quick initial response to this opening poll. We just want to gauge, get a sense of what you're most interested in learning about in the course of today's event. So if you could take a, a moment or two to respond to these two questions. Thank you so much. And we've just uh, got a few more people, I think, who are joining us now. So we'll just give folks a chance to respond to this opening poll. Thank you, keep your responses coming. Okay, and I think, Christina, thank you very much. I think we can close that poll now. Thanks everyone. Um, it's, it's really interesting to see. Uh, we've got a lot of interest in the actual academic program and the nature of our learning program in the middle school as we might expect, wonderful. And if you do have questions, as I mentioned, we have two question and answer periods. The first one related to the learning program and the second one related to admissions. So feel free to submit your questions through the question and answer button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Okay, so um, with that, it's now my great pleasure to introduce you to our middle school leadership team. We have our middle school principal, Gretchen DePoint, and she is joined today by our two vice principals, Rachel Leonard and Anne-Marie Chow. Over to you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Um, and thank you everybody for joining us today. We're really excited uh, to share with you all of the exciting things and the amazing things that we do on our campus. Um, and so we're going to, to walk through some of the different um, areas of our program that really uh, makes us unique in, in Singapore. And really, uh, we want to make sure that we answer all of the questions. And hopefully, from the presentation today, you'll get just a sense of what an amazing community we have on our campus and why we would love for you and your family and your child to join us um, within our campus. So as, as we talk through this, uh, you'll see some really vibrant images uh, that try and um, encapsulate and show you some of the wonderful components of our, of our program within our, our middle school. Here is just an overview of our guiding statements um, and the, some of the following slides will show you more specifics. And what's really important to know about our program is everything that we do is based around our mission and vision. And that is something that, you know, often many schools say, but you will see and you'll hear from our students that it's not just words. It's really, it comes to life through the actions within every classroom, with all the after school activities, with the service, um, with the well being, every component, everything that we do within our campus and on our campus goes back to those, that mission and vision. And you'll see, again as we walk through this presentation that those guiding statements really are very very um, active and, and live within our community number one what is really important uh, this is a wonderful visual to show uh, with some students in the background it is critical that every single day that our learners feel supported and safe 
And what that means is that every individual or our students and every community member feels that they can be themselves on any given day. And so we work hard to create that safe community so that they can develop themselves, develop their, their talents, develop and flourish, find their identity as a young adolescent and really make sure that they bring themselves and that they're allowed to, to bring themselves every given day. So there's a lot of care and compassion and everything that, that happens at UWC. So when we take a look at our well-being principles, uh, you'll see a lot of visuals and, and, and we really encourage you not to just listen to the presentation today, but as it, we kicked off the presentation to kind of go back and really dig into some of these visuals and look at these key words. Um, with the well-being principles, it is critical that our students are competent that they're autonomous and they develop these skills and that they feel the sense of connection on our on our campus and within the classrooms and everything. So if you take a look and see, because we really need to make sure that our, our children are interacting with well with each other, that they take owner, ownership of their learning and that they strive towards their own personal goals. And it's within that secure environment that these things happen. So you'll hear often about the holistic education and there's really the, the, these different components that make our, our program very unique. The academics obviously are really important, but it's not just the academics that we are trying to, to support and foster within our learning community. We have a very comprehensive activities program, the outdoor education, the personal and social education and the service. Those five pillars are all everything that comes together to create that holistic learning environment for our students. So that it's not just what they learn within a classroom, that they're able to take these skills and transfer them not only into their day-to-day -day life as a young developing adolescence, but then translate them into lifelong learning. And if you take a look at, at our profile, these are the qualities and skills that we're proud that we develop and foster for, for our children as they grow and develop as students. And as I just referenced, as, as young people, and then hopefully, and that they're giving back later on in life. We really, the qualities are the commitment to care, that they're principled, that they're resilient. Today, with everything that we um, are experiencing around the world with the pandemic, these are skills that are really important to, to foster, that resiliency through challenges so that they can come up on top and be stronger, and self-aware and learning about themselves so that they learn about their strengths, they learn about their growth areas, and they're constantly reflecting, and they get that feedback from from their teachers, they get that feedback from their peers so that they can become stronger and they can become a, a better individual and as, as a student. And with that, there's lots of skills and these are the skills that we really value. That's a critical thinker. We, we know that it's important to be able to, to do some of just the, the basic academics, but we really want to push our students beyond that so that they can think outside of the box, that they can really attack problems and look for different solutions, which leads into the creativity. Creativity is not just within the arts, it's also the creativity within problem solving and looking at things from different angles and perspectives and collaboration. To be collaborative and have those skills are key today. 
it is it is very unique um, and and not very common to be able to to be able to do things just independently. It's about being able to work with different individuals, be able to look at the different perspectives, so that we can value one another, and then that collective collaboration to to be stronger as we move forward. And so it's important our communication because our communication with, with how we are collaborative with our, with our peers is, is really instrumental. Um, we need to, to learn different skills with how to interact with one another, how to pause and wait and listen to one another, because these are important skills that will be transferred on to their, their later on in life. And self-manage. This is something that is really important and can be a little bit tricky for our, our middle school students because they are becoming young adults and they're developing their, their skills. So to as they go through middle school to really become independent and manage their academics, manage their emotions, all of these different things. And that growth increases over time as they move throughout middle school. And so as, as you've heard me reference, um, it's really important to know the young adolescent uh, is, is really a critical time. There's, there's so much research that we know now about why this period of time is so important. It is often compared to when, a, when your child was an infant, there's so much growth and it's not just physical, it's with their emotions, it's with their brain development. So it's important with our approach within school at this period of time that our approach is developmentally appropriate. And that does vary, that varies very a great deal from sixth grade to seventh grade to eighth grade. And our teachers are very skilled in ensuring that our program is developmentally appropriate. This is something that is really important and I love this visual. Um, this is something that I wish that I was afforded as, as uh, an adolescent. And it's not just about having that outdoor activity. It's about taking that first step and maybe slipping and maybe coming back down, but it's not staying on the ground. It's actually having that confidence and that willpower to say, okay, I can do this. I can take the, the risk and I can keep going and I can push and learning from that ex experience. And we create that community and we create the different opportunities to take those positive risks because within the adolescence, it's important. They'd like to challenge, they, they want to push, but we have to provide those, those positive risks for the students to, to fail but it's not failure, it's that, that growth and that learning is what we really emphasize within our program. And with that, I will turn it over to our Vice Principal of Academics, um, Ms. Anne Marie Chow. Thank you. Thanks, Gretchen. Hi everyone, I'm Anne-Marie Chow and I'm excited to share with you a little bit about our academics program today. And so here at our middle school, our academics extends the concept-based learning that happens in primary school where they're doing a lot more interdisciplinary work. And then in middle school, that starts to be more refined into discipline-specific learning. And so our students have specialist teachers for each subject that really guide their learning through fundamental skills, as well as moving to those conceptual understandings. And so students are offered a broad and balanced range of subjects in the middle school program. Our core subjects are English, mathematics, science, and humanities. But in addition to that, we have lots of exploration courses and all of our students take all of the courses for all three years. And this really allows them to dive deep, to really learn not just the concepts and skills of these courses, but about themselves as learners in these different spaces. And so we have courses in visual arts, drama, music, 
languages other than English or English as an additional language if that's needed, physical education, design and technology, food and nutrition, all amazing courses with great facilities to support each of those areas. So that when students are ready at the end of grade eight to choose their courses for grade nine and 10, they have a really good understanding of themselves and of these different courses that they might wanna pursue with more fo focus. So our teachers really position themselves as guides with students. You often see student teachers pulled up alongside on a chair or a stool with the students, actively coaching them in their learning. So with our concept-based learning program, teachers are using very intentional questions to help the students think for themselves and build their own understanding. A lot of those skills that Gretchen was talking about earlier are applied in these types of conversations. We really try to ensure that our academic program is relevant and that we're teaching students skills, qualities, knowledge that they can turn around and apply into the world. One specific example of this is a unique course that we have here at UWC SEA in our middle school called SEED, Social Environmental Entrepreneurship Development. And in this course, students are empowered to contribute to a peaceful and sustainable future by providing them with an understanding of sustainability, systems thinking, and change-making process through entrepreneurship. This is a three-year course which allows students to extend their thinking and their understanding of the world in both a global and a local context. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Rachel. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Leonard and I'm Vice Principal for uh, Pastoral Care here at the Middle School. And I'm going to be talking to you about a very important part of our uh, program here today, namely the personal and social education element. So everything we do at UWCSEA uh, is very much centered around PSC. So next slide, please. There we go. So as you can see here, um, PSC is very much on the uh, part of the learning of the learning program where the little key is on the slide. So PSC is defined at, as how students come to understand themselves and their relationships with others. And I really like this quote that's um, on our website. It's a foundational element of our program, and it is a key that unlocks the learning in other four elements of the learning program. So you can see here, PSC sits very much at the heart of the other four elements, service, academics, activities, and outdoor ed. So the strength of our learning program is very much in the holistic approach. Uh, you will notice from our learning program that PSC is one of the five elements and is visible across the middle school throughout the whole learning journey of our students. It takes place in mental classes in the morning, in life skills once a week, but also beyond that in every aspect of the social and emotional development of our students in all of their learning in academic service activities and of course outdoor education. So a typical PSE model, as you can see here, would follow um, this model whereby schools might develop programs in a reactive way in order to meet the needs of students and the wider community as issues, concerns, but also opportunities arise, thus resulting in the proactive and developmental aspects of the learning taking a little bit of a backseat. So what we do um, here at UWCSEA is focus on a, on a model that is a lot more intentional. So based on the three aspects you can see here, the proactive and developmental aspects are robust and they are very much uh, the, the core and the focus of, of what we do. The reactive becomes smaller. That doesn't mean to say we do not uh, 
we do not react as and when we need to. So Professor Ron Best, who's a researcher on pastoral care, did a lot of research in order to support this thesis. And that's how we tend to, uh, to work around PSC here. Uh, the developmental aspects are robust, the reactive piece becomes a lot smaller, and we very much are proactive in order to, to make sure that our students are better equipped to cope with the challenges that they will face as they are growing into young adults. Another important um, uh, representation that you see quite a lot here at our middle school is what we call the wellness wheel. And we use this as a guide to our students, but also staff. Uh, it shows clearly all the areas where well-being happens. Gretchen was talking about the importance of well-being. And again, you know, it is very much present in all the, the aspects of learning. And this um, well-being wheel helps us gauge where students might want to focus more on and also helps us support individual conversations when students are conferring with their mentors, for example. So as the, the next slide is coming up, it's not quite clear on my, uh, on my screen. I'm not sure whether it is on yours. Anne-Marie, is it clear? Yes, okay. So um, where does PSC happen? So why did I choose this photo? Well, simply because as I was mentioning earlier, PSC happens absolutely everywhere. And this photo here represents what we call uh, the plaza, which is the heart of our campus here on East. And PSC happens in every single part of the school, whether it's inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom. And so our students in the morning, when they come to school, they meet first with their mentors. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's one aspect where PSC takes place. However, the whole mentor program goes well beyond the classroom and include lots of other aspects. So mental classes help set a safe and secure environment for our students to establish those very important interpersonal relationships that are necessary to ensure that they have a successful experience here. I was mentioning life skills earlier in, in the presentation of uh, where PSC takes place. So really beyond mental time, PSC is also a direct focus in life skills classes which is where students meet once a week. Uh, life skill classes are mainly discussion or activity based, and they're a safe space where students can speak and also develop strategies to face the challenges and, uh, of adolescence. In life skills, our students develop their understanding of some key concepts like self-awareness, relationship building, et cetera. They really also learn how values, beliefs, and attitudes contribute to a positive sense of self. Um, students also explore how to assess and respond to risk, apply interpersonal risks to, to interact with respect, respond to peer pressure, appreciate diversity, and manage change. Our life skills program allows students to understand different variables with regards to self-awareness and managing relationships. We also embed regular practice of mindfulness. So as you can see, overall, the skills our students acquire are very much transferable in everything they do across their learning journey. We talked a little bit about the well-being principles at, at the start of the presentation. They're very much embedded in, in our approaches to, to teaching and learning. And so that's, that's where I'm going to, to end this presentation on PSC. We, we have to highlight the importance of those principles. As Gretchen mentioned earlier, they sit at the heart of what we do. And every effort is made to create an environment where everyone in our community feels connected, autonomous, and competent in order to flourish. So it's been a pleasure for me this morning to talk to you about PSC. I hope to have given you a, a better idea of what it looks like within our uh, middle school, but also beyond that on our campus here at UWC SEA. I'm going to hand back to Gretchen now. Thank you so much, bye bye. I think it's actually back to me. Okay to talk about activities. So no worries. 
Um, at our at our school here, we have an amazing range of activities in our activities program. Things happening before school, during lunch, after school, on the weekends. And we really think about our activities program as a space for students to try new things. So coming back to what Gretchen said about having that um, safe space to fail and learn and grow something they've never done before um, through the program to take those positive risks and to explore those emerging passions. And so for students that really want to um, take something year on year on year on year, we want them to be able to do that as well. Our activities program is organized in these seven different categories. So arts and performance, mind matters, looking at mindfulness and different aspects of thinking uh, puzzles that kids get to do, create and innovate, wellness for life, learn and lead. Specifically, we have different leadership programs where students are learning skills, but then also applying skills, representative sports, and then home languages. This is quite an extensive program where we're encouraging students to be able to um, develop their vocabulary and their cultural understanding about their home language with other students from that same language. So our service and sustainable development program is also very extensive. And uh, one of the things we have worked hard to do is to embed as much of the service program as possible into the rest of the school day. And so a specific example of that is with our um, grade sixes, they are doing um, fruit collection on Fridays for migrant workers. And so they're working to advertise that, they're organizing the collection of the fruit, um, the packaging of the fruit to be distributed. And they do that during their mentor time on, on Fridays where um, our grade eight students are working on composting. And so again, they're collecting the compost all around the campus and then they're working in the compost area here at, here at school. Uh, moving the compost from one section to the next uh, as it goes through the, the composting cycle. So there's also opportunities for students to choose to be involved in service, whether that's campus, local, or global services. Um, and in days past, we also had service trips, and hopefully that will be something that eventually can come back again. So some of our Singapore service opportunities happen right here on our campus where we're hosting different groups of people. And so sometimes that's um, student groups, sometimes that's elderly groups, um, and our students are organizing activities and planning for those visits. Other times they're actually going out into the community. And then our global services are working with service partners that we have vetted very carefully and thought about very intentionally about that sustainable development and sustainable service um, with those, those partnerships. And our students are working um, to raise awareness, to raise funds, but also they're doing a lot of work to develop their understanding of those issues that those service groups are working towards and applying a lot of their learning from the SEED program to think about those systems and that sustainable development um, so that they're really mindful of how we attempt to enact change. And I'll pass it back to you, Rachel. Yes, thank you, Anne-Marie. All right, so I'm going to now be talking about a very exciting component of our learning program. Um, outdoor education. So um, our outdoor education program is uh, extremely uh, rich in opportunities and um, beyond uh, before COVID, sorry, um, a lot of the a lot of the, the outdoor experiences uh, included some some trips outside of Singapore. With COVID and the number of restrictions that we've had, we have developed uh, a, 
an array of opportunities and um, outdoor opportunities for our students that's very, very rich and giving them uh, lots of new uh, ways of challenging themselves. We've got an amazing outdoor education team working tirelessly to make sure that the experiences our students get to get to to live are, are very rich and very exciting. So we are extremely lucky uh, to have such a, an outdoor education program. So uh, next slide, please, Anne Marie. So our, our outdoor education curriculum provides um, opportunities for intentional development of personal identity, but also making sure that students um, develop healthy relationships with one another, um, develop that sense of connectedness we were talking about amongst each other, but also, of course, to nature. And all of these aspects are necessary for their own well-being and allowing them to flourish. So the success and connections outside the classroom, however, um, are, are, are so important. So the opportunities are built uh, in order to make sure that there, there are other elements in the program where they feel successful and they can um, achieve great, uh, great challenges. So activities and PSE form part of that, and they're very much part of that outdoor education experience too. The foundation of our outdoor education curriculum is really to provide students with um, opportunities to experience expedition and outdoor skills that will then allow them to have the experiences that will help them to obtain the benefit of the other three areas for growth in the outdoor education curriculum. So what you can see here is how across the year, the experiences are distributed. So we would start typically with some opportunities ca camps, as we uh, name them here, for grade eights in term one. Then we are we have a focus on grade sixes in term two, and then we we would end the year with our grade seven students. Um, the feedback that we had from our students last year after going on camps um, around the on campus, but also around the campus in Singapore was how they had been able to explore parts of the, um, of the city of the island that they hadn't been to before, but also to discover the, the richness of the wildlife that we have here in Singapore and coming back with amazing stories of spotting lots of different wildlife, seeing crocodiles, seeing the um, lizards and, and snakes, but also really pushing themselves to get outside of their comfort zone, doing some rope courses and climbing and also kayaking, etc. And all of this really connects with developing that sense of community and belonging that is so important to us here at UWCSEA. So you can see them here trying to light a fire um, and, and, and yes, just learning a lot uh, from each other. So I think we've come to the to the end of our middle school presentation this morning. We've given you a snapshot of, a, of all the different aspects of our learning program um, here at the middle school. And we hope that it's really made you want to find out uh, more. So I'm going to now hand uh, over to Christina, who is going to continue with the, with the session. Thank you all very, very much. If we didn't manage to get to your questions, um, audience, please rest assured that you have a chance to contact us in admissions and we will get back to you with any remaining questions you have. So we're not yet done with today's session, but we are gonna bid goodbye to our colleagues and students from the middle school. So they will leave us now. And I'm going to invite um, my colleague, Christina, to share our virtual tour of the middle school with you now. Thank you. So, we know you can't join us on campus just yet. We would love for that to happen when it's possible again. But in the meantime, we do have a virtual tour that we are going to show you now. So thank you, Christina.